the headlines. Former coordinator of the presidential amnesty program arrested. Stakeholders present a policy brief on environmental impact assessment in Nigeria. Science and Technology Ministry launches Technology Orientation Center. World Health Organization warns Nigeria on this terrorist outbreak. Welcome to the news hour uh, at this time on Television Nigerian. I am Eunice Johnson. The former Special Advisor on Niger Delta to President Mohamed Buhari, retired Brigadier General Paul Tarila Boro, has been arrested. Boro, who also doubled as the coordinator of the presidential amnesty program, was arrested by a combined team of EFCC and operatives of the Office of the National Security Advisor from his home in Guarimpa, Abuja. Operatives of the anti graph body also reported the discovery of about $9 million in cash stashed in several safe boxes in parts of the residence of the deposed amnesty leader. While announcing Boro's dismissal by the Buhari administration, the National Security Advisor Major General Babagana Monguno, retired, had been directed to probe the activities of the amnesty office from 2015 when Boro was appointed, especially allegations of financial impropriety and other acts that were allegedly detrimental to the objectives of the presidential amnesty program. He remains in the custody of the EFCC. The need to expedite action on the cleanup of the country's bioenvironment, especially in the Niger Delta region, where the activities of oil explorations have left unsavory impacts on the ecology of the region, was brought to the fore recently at an event organized by a non-governmental organization in Abuja. TVN's Diane Ojua has more on the event. The resulting ecological and environmental damages from oil exploitation has impacted massively on the health and income of the people of Niger Delta. The case of the Niger Delta region is more precarious given that for over 50 years of oil exploitation, the Ogoni people of the region have endured government's procrastination in the need to clean up the region's bioenvironment. This informs the public presentation of a policy brief on improving Nigerians' environmental and social impacts. Assessment by Environmental Restore Center seeks to highlight procedures and practice. One of the areas of consideration was the issue about the cultural areas, consideration, the health, community engagement. This policy brief is to bring the public's attention to the need for us to have a review the brief also aims to identify, predict, evaluate, and mitigate the environmental, social, and other biophysical consequences of proposed developmental projects. This policy brief, if passed by the National Assembly, will give community the opportunities to exercise their rights and privileges as it touches on the environment. From Abuja, Daina Ojoa, TVN News. Science and technology innovations in Nigeria got a boost recently in Abuja with the launch of a technological orientation center and infrastructure that will provide an enabling environment for budding innovators and entrepreneurs in the country. TVN's Oluremi Dominic has the report. For science and engineering infrastructure. This national resource, being inaugurated by the Minister of Science and Technology, Obun Naya Onu, will serve as a hub for gathering, display and assessment of the brightest of minds, innovation and other links to new and emerging technologies. The hub will help decide the relevance of emerging technologies to the economy. The project, a brainchild of Naseni, is the ground for an intercourse of ideas, creativity and products, plus services that could drive sustainable national socio-economic development. Further it will complement the cardinal objective of the Presidential Executive Order Number 5, which seeks to promote self-reliance in the processes pursuant to our rebirth as a modern nation of enhanced industrial capacity, especially in the areas of new and emerging technologies. Key players at the launch of this visionary effort believes that the approach is in line with the implementation of the science, technology and innovation component of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan of the federal government. 
After the break, WHO warns Nigeria 15 others on Listeria's outbreak. For staying tuned. The World Health Organization WHO has warned Nigeria and 15 other countries, especially African countries, of a Listeriasis outbreak that started in South Africa in 2017, confirming its support for their preparedness and response to the disease. Listeriasis is a bacterial infection primarily transmitted via the oral route after ingestion of contaminated food products. It can cause severe illnesses, sometimes resulting in lifelong harm and even death. According to WHO data, nearly 200 South Africans have died since January 2017 as a result of contaminated ready-to-eat meat products that are wildly consumed in the country and may also have been exported to two West African countries and 14 members of the South African Development Community. South African health authorities recently declared the source of the outbreak as a factory in Polokwane in the country's northeast. And in sports, Nigerian athletes are in high spirit as they prepare for the forthcoming Commonwealth Games in Australia. Nigerian athletes to the Commonwealth Games in Australia have assured Nigerians of good finishings after they just ended third Golden League in Abuja, organized by the Athletics Federation of Nigeria. The competition in Nigeria was to further prepare and evaluate athletes for the event at Australia in April. Sheye Ogunlewe dominated the 100 meters men in 10.23 seconds. Blessing Ogundiro won the women category in 11.84 seconds. The last trial, I did 11.30. For this one, this trials, I did 11.66. Before I get to the Commonwealth Games, I'm going to improve on my time. Team Nigeria will be in Australia on March. 24. Football fans expected to be at the Municipal Stadium in Roklov on Friday to watch the Super Eagles take on Poland will pay between $55, approximately 19,800 Naira, and $63, approximately 22,680 Naira for the tickets. Sources say that of the 43,000 capacity stadium, only 33 tickets are left for sale. The game will be the first meeting between both countries while being Nigeria's first in 2018 ahead of the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Other friendlies lined up for the Super Eagles ahead of the 2018 World Cup are against Serbia, Democratic Republic of Congo, England and the Czech Republic while they will square off against Croatia, Iceland and Argentina in Group D at the finals of the tournament. And on the foreign scene, a British military jet used in the Red Arrows aerobatic display team crashed on Tuesday at a base in Wales. The Ministry of Defence officials declined to give more details, but it was understood two people were on board when it crashed at the Valley Royale Air Force Base. British authorities say that they are investigating the incident and would comment in due time while the police has confirmed their visit to the crime scene. The Red Arrows jets flown by experienced military pilots are known around the world for their daring stunts. To end the news, a recap of the major stories. Former coordinator of the presidential amnesty program arrested. Stakeholders present a policy brief on environmental impact assessment in Nigeria. Science and Technology Ministry launches Technology Orientation Center. World Health Organization warns Nigeria on listeriosis outbreak. And that's the news on Television Nigerian. But before I go, I leave you with this thought. 
What is worth doing is worth doing well. Thanks for staying tuned. Have a beautiful evening. I am Eunice Johnson.